this is not a lie this is exactly why now anytime i do it if they ask who does that belong to i just go like huh uh-huh what <laughs> hey rich babes welcome back to the channel and also welcome welcome to all of the new rich babes who already subscribe and if you haven't subscribed i don't know why you have not subscribed like don't let me get on you because this is like the best channel ever to help you glow up and we talk about so many wonderful topics to help you out becoming the woman of your dreams it's all about self-love self-concept and glowing up it's becoming a woman of your dreams okay becoming her so today we're going to dive into a topic that doesn't get talked about enough which is soul ties specifically how they can hold you back especially if you're having casual sex or engaging or dating and having multiple different situationships. So let's get into it. What exactly is a soul tie? A soul tie is an emotional and spiritual bond you create with someone who you become intimate with, especially through sex. Now, this isn't just some fluff concept. It's about the energy and the emotions that you exchange with someone on a deep level. And whether you believe it or not, those connections can have a real impact on your mental, emotional, and even physical well-being. These soul ties can actually derail you from your glow up journey in several ways. And here's why. Emotional drain. When you have a soul tie, especially with someone who is not good for you, it can drain you emotionally. You might find yourself feeling anxious, confused, or sad. Often without any clear reason, it's like carrying emotional baggage you didn't even sign up for. The second one is lack of focus. Being emotionally wrapped up in someone else's drama or emotions can make it hard to focus on your own goals. Whether it's leveling up in your journey for your career, hitting the gym, or just spending quality time with yourself. Number three lowering your standards mm, y'all <laughs> soul ties can sometimes make you feel attracted or even addicted to someone who doesn't treat you well you start accepting behaviors and situations that are beneath you and that's definitely not a part of my rich babes glow up plan what is going on <laughs> and number four blocks your growth with the wrong person you might find yourself stuck in the same cycle repeating the same mistakes you might feel like you're constantly moving two steps forward and then three steps back a soul tie can keep you mentally and emotionally tethered to the past preventing you from growing into the best self now, before we get into this video, Rich Babes, I just want us to sit back and think for a moment. We've all had that one guy or maybe a few guys that has definitely put it down in the bedroom. He might not have been our boyfriend. He might have just been a neighbor, a friend, whatever. But when he starts asking you whose is it or he's giving you all those sweet nothings, yo, and then after everything's done, and you're trying to figure out what's all of this, how I'm feeling. And then he's asking you why you're crazy, baby. <laughs> Me knowing this now at 34 and being celibate for the last three years is now coming into the importance of why celibacy is the key. Because when you lay down with somebody, you're laying down with all of that person, the seen and the unseen. So with that being said, I ain't gonna hold y'all too much, okay? Like, subscribe, and share. It helps the channel. We're trying to grow, Rich Babes. Please also check out the links down below. And make sure that you comment. You know I love reading your comments. Comment, comment down below so I can read them and we can all help each other out. So let's begin. Bro, they not telling y'all everything y'all need to know about a soul tie. And to use the word soul tie is just to keep the shit cute. We about to get to the real of that shit. A soul tie is really just an energy transfer, a spirit transfer. 
that means y'all souls, once y'all do what y'all do, y'all souls become married. You probably didn't physically marry her or him, but once you have sex with them, you marry them, mentally and emotionally. That means all the demons that you got go to them and all the demons and spirits that they got go to you. That's why it's so hard to break that shit off. Because a soul tie ain't just loving somebody so much. A soul tie is transferring of energies, spirits. That's why you can feel certain shit. That's why you think certain shit. I'm telling you. But this is the reason why soul ties are so important. You're going around and you, you're having raw sex with people. You are entering them and, and y'all are sharing this really special situation. And then you leave and say, oh, yeah, that's just my side. <laughs> oh, I don't even care about Tisha. But you're looking her in her eyes and you're, you're, you're giving her the best. Ever tongue, I'm tongue I'm in happy. her ear. You're licking her ears. I'm you can happy. hear your thoughts. It's a whole bunch of sh going on. I'm happy and you that think that, that you can do that, that casually, like every Tuesday? <laughs> that deep ass shit I just described. Yeah, they, they do think that. Yeah, yeah. And, they think yeah. That, and they think that it's normal. We're the crazy ones for getting attached and getting feelings. You can't listen to so, yeah, no, yeah, don't, don't get y'all crazy. We're the problem. I think you're naive, not crazy. Yeah, I will you. say that word. He's giving me this great. And I'm just so naive to believe that he actually cares about me. He's doing it I wrong, agree. but then he's going to say he's not ready for it, baby. Sex is the highest energy that you're ever going to create, right? It literally creates life. When y'all having sex with people and you're saying, this is my pussy, that's a spell. And you say, and you tell him. Who else do we have yeah, to say that? Pastor Brian Meadows Pastor Brian said that. My pastor said, said this. He said yeah. that. He said that exact thing. That's a spell. A lot of men, and that's what, that's what I mean. Men practice witchcraft all the time. On these women that's why these women go crazy and he's like are oh, you acting crazy well you told her this is my pussy and she said yes and now you are tethered and you don't even know why you're going crazy because that guy treats you like crap tethered mm -hmm. that's the soul tie mm -hmm. that tethering is the soul tie y'all literally made a pact sex is the highest energy that you're ever going to create right it literally creates life from sex so if you are saying chance because that's literally what that is while you're having sex that is a whole ritual he owns you until you break that soul tie which most people don't even know how to break the soul tie they don't even know that they have one they just are so the biggest difference between someone having a soul tie with someone versus someone just having an attachment with someone is this we're dealing with spirits and you may think what spirits when you're dealing with a soul tie, some of those spirits are not always good. Nine out of nine, they're demonic. And these spirits do not come to play. Like, for example, if you never dealt with the spirit of depression and all of a sudden, once you connect with this person in that way and that soul tie is formed, now all of a sudden you find yourself depressed. You find yourself, your heart, that heaviness, that dark cloud that's over and you can't shake it because the soul tie has been formed and you're picking up these spirits that this person is dealing with or the spirit of perversion, the things that you didn't even crave. Now you find your body craving the things that you say you would never do. Now you find yourself doing attachment does not have that much power. Soul ties do. Wait, ladies, and this goes for Christians and non-Christians alike, just ladies dating men, period. The older and the more mature you get, the more you realize how much it really does not make sense at all to hook up or have situationships or to let men casually have sex with us. Why are we having casual sex? Why are we sharing intimacy with, with each other just for you to be texting other women and trying to be intimate with them the next day? Like when you just sit down and think about it, it just does not make sense. And you have to really be mature. And I don't even think you need to be that mature. You just need to take the time to sit down and, and, and think about it. There's a reason why God told us to only have sex with our partners. And the older I'm getting, the more it's making more and more sense to me. We are not supposed to be having sex with random men who aren't our men. At least let him be a boyfriend. But to meet a man and have sex with him and let him into our private space and then let him into our private areas ladies we gotta stop see before man gets married if he's had sexual experiences let's say he's been with this one woman right and let's say this one woman um just for the sake of conversation no disrespect but let's say this one woman is a freak and he goes over there late at night and gets you know you know can gets his freak on he never has any desire to marry her but you know he gets his freak on because you know she wild girl and turns him out whatever and then they say that this girl over here you know she, she may not be that that you know that, that type of you know party girl but she's 
she's loving, you know what I'm saying? So he goes over there, you know, and she cook him a nice little meatloaf dinner at two in the morning. And, you know, he go over there, whatever. And let's say oh. <laughs> a little meatloaf sandwich with some, <laughs> with some <White> chips. Bread. <laughs> yeah, with some chips. Some Lay's <laughs> yeah, chips. Yeah, yeah. Red then, Kool-Aid. Okay. It's my turn. It's my All turn. Right. It's my turn. And so. And then let's say he goes over here. And then let's say he's with his, you know, you know, um, maybe she was his first. You know what I'm saying? So he's got all this soul ties with her. You know what I mean? You know, she don't really, you know, you know, you know, you know it, it, it like she dope, but that's his first. And so, and, and, then, and then like maybe she's, you know, over, she's a good girl, you know what I'm saying? She's like, you know, and you know, just whatever you want to do. I don't care what you want to do, you know, whatever you want to do. So, so now he's got all these five spirits. And he's got all these five different personalities that have fed five different appetites in him he gets married and puts the five spirits on that one woman and you know what it does to that one woman when he puts the spirit on that five on that five spirits on that one woman it makes that one woman do this and she's living her marriage with the weight of these five spirits and every time you go to bed with us, you feel like he's not with me. He's with one of them. And what we're not taught is, is that if we don't go, if we don't go through the divine divorce of divorcing our hearts and souls from them spirits, we will never get to enjoy who God made her to be until we divorce those other spirits this is how sex is way more powerful than you think these days everybody just clapping without realizing what this actually is y'all gotta really start considering who you laying with like do you realize you're actually entering somebody's vessel every person you have sex with you have a soul tie with why do you think couples start to look alike after a long period of time you're literally becoming one and that's why being a dog or a hoe is for the birds because women think emotionally and men think logically meaning if you don't like the girl you can do your thing and keep it pushing but she gonna develop an emotional attachment towards you and no matter what it's always gonna be there because like i said bro it's a soul tie and y'all boys wonder why these females be turning up on y'all or be tripping you lighting candles listening to frequencies which is music and you're entering somebody's body this shit is literally a ceremony bro if you have sex with somebody you're gonna literally feel exactly what they're going through meaning if they're at a low state don't be surprised if you start feeling sluggish too which is the most powerful thing in the world but y'all be safe sex is a spiritual expression mm -hmm. you feel exactly. me and and, and exactly. things things can disturb the spirit if they strong enough mm -hmm. and someone's sex if strong enough can disturb your spirit whatever work you was doing whatever mm. coof you had about yourself could be tossed out just like that because of mm. what they was able to do to you wow. and yeah. a lot of people don't understand the spiritual space they take up in the True. bedroom you feel me True. so it's like yeah i trust you to get into it but can i trust you with what come from it right. and sometimes the answer is no and for a like me like i ain't saying i'm the i'm gonna be the bestest i know my spiritual presence in the bedroom strong bro mm -hmm. if i do too much to a woman too early and i don't know what she gonna be like down the road listen it's like no matter how much people say it people just don't understand soul ties are real the more mentally mature and experienced that you become you will realize that every moment of temptation is not worth intertwining a lot of y'all be so wrapped up like oh he cute oh she cute uh, they popular, they got money, they this, ooh, they thick, ooh, he this. You don't even know what that spirit talking about. See, this is why I I like to interview people's spirit, their head and their heart, to figure out where they at. If you don't pass the vibe check, you, you can't even, you can't get in. You don't get a wristband, you can't get in. And I don't think people understand that how powerful it is to be able to actually have discipline. It sounds like a lecture. It sounds so bad, but you will save yourself so much moment, have so much clarity and purity just by disciplining yourself and really stepping back and analyzing before you even get into it. So I just want to tell my kings and queens out there to please be more mindful before you just spraying yourself thin. Soul ties are real. Pay attention. At some point, that person's baggage become y'all's. Y'all think it's just one night, but then one night turn into every other weekend or once a month. Now, in some way, what they got going on or what they dealing with affects you. And it will. And you will get tired. Hashtag.
purity. I do not think we're supposed to be having sex the way we do because sex is so powerful. You legit bring another soul into this universe. That mean we not really supposed to be just doing it casually, bro, with this person, that person, and that person, bro, because it's so powerful. It's a big energy transfer. You ever have sex and you feel so drained out there? But we just do it so casually. For fun. Apps, social media. Not really supposed to be seeing this amount of men and women in a day, bro. Unless we going out. That's the fun thing, going out, seeing people. Men see attractive women and women see attractive men daily. That's, that's how it go. Like a pictures slide in dms that's why relationships don't work man because it's so easy to cheat and you have access to so many people and so many different things what a society we live in y'all what a society young ladies let me explain something to you and this is in response to a comment so uh or a question that someone wanted me to explain to him so i'm gonna tell a story uh when i was in college there was this chick that liked me. And later on, her boyfriend uh, came into school, right? Obviously, I didn't know she had a boyfriend. I just know she liked me. And I never really pursued it. I just, you know, she just hit on me and basically straight up told me she wanted me to hit, right? And uh, there's two, two aspects to this story. So I remember telling a story one day. And what's really crazy is when you're full of lust, any aspect of admiration of somebody just motivates that lust. And that's why you need to be mature enough to see the angles that are coming from. But when I was in school, I was really, really being blessed. And I was restrained. Um... I mean, really restrained. I mean, girls really liked me, but I liked God more. And so I was just seeing the power and the characteristics of God just working in my life. And so I remember these young ladies sitting around making, they weren't really making fun of me, but they were just saying that everybody else is doing this, why you don't do this? And I began to explain to them what happens when you bind yourself with somebody. One of the things that are absolutely true about the Bible is that when whatever, whoever you sleep with, specifically women, because you have to, it, some people tell you, you let your guard down, you let more than your guard down. You let more than your guard down. A model told me this once. I will never forget her telling me this. I didn't expect it to come out of her mouth, I swear. She said, when, one, when a woman opens her legs to a man, she opens her soul. I will never forget that, ever. And that's true. What, you, what, what the soul is, and let me explain to you what the soul is, because that's, not many people take the time to explain this. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. Okay, your mind is simply, and to explain it more bio biologically, your mind is simply a filter. Okay, and I don't know, for some reason we're taught more about the brain and the spinal cord and the connectors of the spinal cord more than we are the nervous system. Okay, the nervous system really is the memory and the soul of the body. Okay? When you have sex with a man, everything that's in him and on him, you're submitting to. Do you understand what that means? Another thing that the Bible gets right, if you resist the devil or evil, it has to do what? Flee. The opposite, when you submit to demonics or a man, you're submitting to all the negative characteristics of that man, physically, biologically, psychologically. If you don't believe me, how do you think disabilities are passed on to your children? 
Now, I need you to think about that. I know ladies are a lot smarter than guys. So I know if anything, you got that. A better example is this. And this is what threw me off about Steve Harvey because I'm really, I'm a real big proponent of Steve Harvey in one aspect. One aspect. The other aspects, I'm really not a fan because they don't know what the hell he's talking about. When it comes to his belief system. I really believe Steve is a believer. I really believe that. There's too much he understands about believing not to be one. But this is what happens. He loves his daughter, right? I want you to go back and look at a video of his son-in-law, a current son-in-law that's dating Lori. And I want you to listen to a story where he talks about asking the devil for help for his role in this movie or this series. I'm going to tell you something you, you guys can't get off you. Okay, there's sub, several things you can't get off you. And two of them is a man and the devil. I just explained, I'm going to explain to you again. Your baby comes out with your attributes and the man you sleep with attributes or characteristics. Not just his looks, his disabilities, even his soul contents. I told my ex, my son had anxiety. And she's like, oh, no, he didn't. she's going to say no about anything. But I know he does because I gave it to him. I got a, a little, I'm not going to say his name. He's a big time football player. He has it. You can see character. These traumas were passed on, you know, thank God I don't have any real crazy characteristics like murder or you understand. But all of that is stored in your nervous system. Your nervous system is deep. Do some research, ladies. But let me get to that, that Lori Harvey thing. That same opportunity that provoked him to call out to Lucifer or Satan or Satan, is now on her. And Steve Harvey didn't speak up with the authority God gave him and say, look, or at least tell her, listen, the same thing I'm telling you guys. So when I sat down with these ladies in college and I told them, I'm not having sex with you because I don't want what's in you. Everybody you've ever slept with. See, when you hear that, you hear these, ooh, demons, and, and that's true. But let me explain something to you. Do you know how the spiritual gets in the physical? And you've heard stories in the Bible. They get in the physical sexually. You have entrances. We all have holes. When you let, see, again, the word is let, allow. Allow, submit your will. And that's what you're doing when you sleep with somebody, just anybody. Imagine sleeping with 100 people, 200 people, 300 people. Now, I've seen people, for the lack of a better term, decompress from all that, but still go back to the same stuff. If you understand your Bible too, it says the same thing. It talks about when the Holy Spirit cleans a place and you go back to that or allow them back, it gets seven times worse. It's important that you young ladies understand more than just the biblical perspective of what happens to you when you sleep with somebody. And you, or I'm going to use a better word, submit your will. That is what you're doing. So you think you feel empowered by sleeping with whoever you want to sleep with. I'll say this, and maybe this will help you because I don't think you guys are going to stop having sex. Ask God what you're supposed to do. Don't listen to religion. 
Listen to God. He will tell you, even if he tell you no, and he probably tell you no 90%, of, 100% of the time. But either way, never not listen to God. Never not listen to God when it comes to a man, period. You may not see a billion dollars in that man, but God will do whatever you need to be done. Because everything in him, the God, the man God calls for you, everything you need is in him. Be careful, young ladies. And it's actually sad that this is not taught in school, nor openly discussed in a household. Because this is one of the things that I wish I knew when I was younger, before I even started experimenting with a lot of stuff. So this is mostly to my younger women out there, because I want you to protect your energy. I want you to protect yourself. Yeah. So let me tell you about soul ties. Soul ties are those emotional and spiritual connections that are formed through engaging with someone sexually. And through that activity, we form deep bonds with this individual, which actually affects us emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Let me give you an example of how this affects us. Let's say you had a one night stand and that person had depression and anxiety. Since sex is an energy exchange between people, that low vibrational energy is also passed on to you. How much? I don't know. We cannot see energy. And so let's say that person also had past partners. Let's say about 10 partners. Those 10 people Eight out of them, let's say, had anxiety or traumatic experiences like most of us had. Since that was in the past, they also did the energy exchange. They also exchanged this low vibrational energy. And now that he has done it with you, their energies were with him too when he did it with you. Do you get me? It's like a, a web of energy exchange. Now, you only did it with this person, but you got the energy of some people and since we cannot segregate energy we don't know which energies were shared with you because like i said it's a web of shared energies between a lot of people here's another good example i have not met anyone who is sleeping around drinking living the life who is not feeling lost if they tell you that they're feeling great or they're okay whatsoever they're 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 lying because deep down inside, they're feeling so lost because of so many people that they've engaged with. Just imagine how much energy he had to exchange between a lot of people already. That will make you feel lost for sure. And that's why choosing celibacy for me is one of the best decisions I've done in my life. Because now I can focus with my own energy and I can heal from my past relationships. Now that you are aware of this, be careful and protect what you can now. Name one thing we underestimate about men. We underestimate the fact that men sometimes intentionally cause you to have a soul tie. That's right. They might not know what it's called, but ladies, don't get it twisted. A man will try to rush into having sex with you, will put it on you, make you speak in tongues, speak his names, feel intense feelings that will open you up and allow you to be vulnerable to forming a soul tie. And if he forms a soul tie with you and you don't have control over your feminine power and your feminine energy, now he does. Now through the bond, through the court, he can control you. He can control how you feel. He can control your desire to want him. And it makes it easy for him because now he has you at his beck and call. You're going to tolerate certain behaviors from him while he's moving on to his next conquest. That's why it's very important that you are careful who you allow in your body, who you're allowing to hit the bottom and make you speak in tongues because you can pay. Let's talk about soul ties. Now, soul ties are when your soul is intermingled around somebody else's soul or when your soul is intermingled around something else, right? And everyone knows you can get a soul tie from, from, from having sex, but you can also get a soul tie with somebody else without even having sex. And a soul tie can be one-sided. It's possible for you to have sex with somebody and you not feel any type of way, but they feel some type of way, if that makes sense. First Samuel chapter 18, verse one reads, and it came to pass when he, talking about David, he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So as we read, soul ties aren't always bad. Jonathan and David had a healthy brotherly love soul tie. 
but they can be unhealthy when the person or the thing is a high as high as an authority as God is in your life or higher than God is in your life. Right. Because then you'll be dependent on that person or thing for emotional and mental stability. Now, your soul is composed of your mind, your will and your emotions. So when you find that your mind, your will and your emotions can't resist the person or the thing or the activity, then your soul could be tied to it. So your soul can be tied to the action of smoking and you don't know it. Your soul could be tied to, to um, your phone and you don't know it. Your soul could be tied to an app, TikTok, <clears throat> and you don't know it. Your soul could be tied to a musician or an artist. That's a big one. And you don't know it. Your soul could be tied to food, could be tied to porn, could be tied to music, to be, could be tied to, to TV, could be tied to, man, at this point, we all got soul ties. I promise y'all, I'll be praying, and I'll be going, I'll be going, I'll be praying, and I'll look at my, my hand, my phone's in my hand. I'm like, why my phone in my hand? It's because while I was praying, my arm unconsciously just grabbed my phone and started scrolling. I'm telling you, when your soul is tied to something, things like that happen. The people that, that happen to you, you know what I'm talking about. It's not, I'm not even lying. Another name for a soul tie could be addiction, captivity, obsession, or yoke. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So don't, don't let your soul be tied to unbelievers. It's not saying it's bad to, you know, be cool with unbelievers. I have many unbelieving friends, right? But don't let your soul be tied to unbelievers because then you start to live like them because you're yoked with them. So how do we break these chains off of our life, right? These chains that tie our soul with something else or a person. We have to fast from it or them or abstain from it. Now, I can't tell you specifically how long. I have to leave that up for the Holy Spirit to tell you. But I can give you an example of what happened in my life. So my soul used to be really tied to TV, secular TV. I could not eat without watching TV. I could not sleep without watching TV. Every time I was sad, TV was my comfort. I could sit at a screen, watch a movie or binge watch a show for a De weeks like seriously i was so tied to it for real it literally felt like i was inside the tv and don't get me wrong tv isn't necessarily bad but i felt like it was hindering me and i wanted to go further in god so this might seem like to you like oh he's doing too much like tv i love tv like he's doing too much but don't knock it till you try it so i abstained from tv for two weeks and i can only watch sermons and i'm telling you bro whenever <laughs> when i stopped watching tv my dreams got clear because I stopped watching television to go to sleep and I let God tell me a vision at night. So I'm telling you, my dreams became crazy. I started craving to watch sermons. I started craving God. I started praying more. Everything was going good until the end of the two weeks. So at the end of the two weeks, it got to the point where I was mad at God. I was, I was literally like cussing at God, like asking God, why did you make me like this? And this, this, da, 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 da. I hate my life. All this other stuff, right? Not knowing that I was being delivered at that moment and everything that was inside of me was coming out of me, if that makes sense. Those two weeks, God had delivered me from the altar of television. Now, don't get me wrong. I still watch TV. I still watch a show here and there, movie with my friends. But now I'm not addicted like I used to be. It's not like, it's not like I find life in TV, if that makes sense. Like I would much rather watch a good sermon than watch a movie, for real. I used to be able to watch three to four movies a day. I'm serious, a day. But now that desire left and in those two weeks, I realized that that what made me want to watch TV wasn't even me. It was because my soul was tied to TV. So I broke the yoke, break the yoke that's over your life. If your soul is tied to a person, break it. Stop watching their stories. Stop texting them. Just pray for them and ask God to deliver you from the tie between you and them. Break it. If your soul is tied to TV, break the yoke. If your soul is tied to your phone, break the yoke. Break the yoke that's over your life. Hey, Rich Babe. So I was just thinking, like, wasn't there a song called Do It On The D? Like, I swear, digmatized, most definitely. That is us. It's okay. Don't be ashamed. I put my hands up three times, okay? Probably even more than that, because when I say that thing be good, it be good, but it also don't be good for you sometimes either. So let's get into why casual sex can intensify soul ties. Okay, no judgment here, okay? But it's essential to know that even if casual sex for you, your body, your soul may not get that memo. Every time you connect with somebody physically, there's an exchange of energy. And that can create a soul tie, whether you intend it on it or not. And sometimes those casual connections can become 
an emotional one that is harder to shake off than you realize. So protecting your energy and breaking these soul ties is very important. And here are some steps to help you. Number one is to set clear boundaries, knowing what you're willing to accept and what you're not. Make sure you're not giving your energy to someone who don't deserve it. You know we be laid up with, you know, day day and them knowing daggone well they don't be deserving your pee, but yet you give it to them because you horny in the middle of the night. Like, come on. Number two is practice self-care rituals. So taking care of yourself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, meditating, journaling, self-reflection can help you cut those ties. You know what I love to do? I love to take Wednesdays off for just me, okay? I don't, I, I was actually born on a Wednesday, to be honest, but I love me some Wednesdays um, because I will literally go to the store and I will buy me some real flowers, real flowers, okay? And then I'll buy me all my little soaps and stuff and like little cute little stuff if I already don't have it. And I will literally take a moment to let, just sit in the tub and have a beautiful bubble bath with some real flowers. And I will pretty much, it's like that self-love. It's like I'm giving myself the love that I deserve from myself. And I will just take that time to be in the tub and just give myself some self-love affirmations and listen to self-love um, meditations, music and stuff. And I actually have some stuff for you guys. So that's something in the future. And that really helps me out. That's my self-care ritual. I want to know what is yours. So please comment down below if you have any. And if you're looking for some help in that, I'll make a video. So number three is limit casual encounters. Be selective about who you allow into your life and your body. Make sure they align with your goals and your values. Number four is seek closure and healing. If you feel tied to someone who is not good for you, acknowledge it and find ways to heal. Therapy, spiritual guidance, or even just talking it out loud to a trusted friend can really help. Make sure they are a good friend, remember? <laughs> and number five is stay focused on your goals. Remember yourself every day of what you're working towards when you keep your goals at the forefront. It becomes easier to spot distractions that aren't worth your time. Oh, I'm so glad I left with that because I've been saying this for a long time. I'm like, look, these men are nothing but a distraction. And I really realized that once I kind of stepped out of you know having that casual sex and really start standing on my own business with becoming celibate and i'm like y'all really a distraction i really have to sit up here and find time to do you like what i like i got so much time in a day before i gotta pick up my kids and then i gotta sit up here and do you for a couple of hours and then be tired and i gotta get my kids and we gotta go football practice so much and I'm like mm, that two three hours I can use that to go start my YouTube channel start my business do something whatever or even just having some rest and a lot of times like once I started realizing that my time is worth so much more to my goals than to go fuck some nigga like <laughs> yeah I'm not doing that especially as I know he's not going to take me seriously and you know it's like what so rich babe so just remember this your glow up journey is all about becoming the best version of yourself don't let anyone or anything take you off that path be mindful of who you're allowing into your space physically and emotionally and always always protect your peace and energy until next time Keep shining, keep growing, and remember, you got this. Stay rich, rich babes. Love you.